Hey guys, what is up? It is the Fast Break Report here bringing you guys another vlog. Uh, almost forgot to make a video tonight. I, I've been wore out. Uh, work today was not exactly stressful, but it just, I was, I don't know if it's the weather, like it was almost 70 degrees here today in New York where I live, which is uncommon for this time of year. Um, and I don't know if it was like allergies or whatever, but I just felt like drowsy all day. And then I realized like, Hey, I gotta, I gotta make a video. And, uh, at the same time tomorrow, uh, I have to go to Newburgh and I'm going to be there from 9am in the morning till probably 1130 at night because I have my local regional match for APA. Uh, if any of you guys know what that is, it's a pretty big deal. Um, I'll be playing against 84 people tomorrow to represent the Hudson Valley in uh, and in Las Vegas at pool. I play in a pool league, so uh, needless to say, like YouTube has kind of been taking a back seat this week. Uh, but nevertheless, the show must go on because I do want to talk about the Pacers um, because I I've watched the past couple games. Uh, in our last five games, we've lost I believe three of them. And uh, we're running into consistency problems, uh, and that's that's not a good thing to have with 19 games left in the season. Uh, we really got to buckle down. We're not gonna have ben, have Ben Matherin for the next, I think, three or four games, which is not good. Uh, you know, Ben Matherin, when he plays, when Ben Matherin plays 30 plus minutes and scores 15 plus points, we tend to win. And when Andrew Nemhard starts, uh, we also tend to win as well. Like it usually goes pretty well. Um, but there's going to be a lot of guys on this team that are going to be asked to step up here in the, in the second half of this, this season or this last 19 game stretch. Um, I know it sounds like a lot, but it's really not. It's really not a whole lot of games. Um, you know. When you think about it, like we've only got a, maybe a month left in the NBA season until we get into the playoffs, and this is a bad time to be struggling. I, I'm just I'm just gonna call it, man. Like this is a bad time for us to be struggling and being inconsistent. Uh, you know, Miami is looking like they're turning a corner. Like my the Miami Heat look like you know they could be an, an NBA Finals threat again. Uh, you know, granted the 76ers are playing worse, but that's because Joel Embiid's not there. We're, we're a team that like, we, we got to take full advantage of what we can get. Um, you know, the loss to the Spurs was kind of disheartening to me because I was like, this is a team we should fucking beat. Like they're what the second worst team in the NBA. I mean, if we go to basketball reference, uh, yeah, yeah, San Antonio is like the third worst team in the NBA with a record of 13 and 50. And we still can't fucking beat them. Um, but we can come out and beat the Mavericks. We can give the Timberwolves a run for their money and lose by one basket. You know, granted, it was Anthony Edwards did have a, a, a pretty solid block at the end of that game. But it's just the idea we can't have these things. These next 19 games are very important because I'm just going to call it what it is, man. I don't expect us to be a uh, like a. a an NBA Finals contender, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's possible. I, I'm not going to rule it out because anything is possible in the playoffs. Last year, we saw Miami, who shouldn't have even made it out of the fucking play and go all the way to the NBA Finals. So, really, anything is possible, and especially with this basketball team where it seems like we uh, play to the skill levels of our opponent, which it, it feels fucking weird to say that because we... Uh, we lose to bad teams, but beat the good teams. It, it, it just, it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, but it's just an idea. It's like, we're a team that's very moody when it comes to whoever the opponent is. Like we play to their level when really we should be making other teams play to our level. If, if you want my honest opinion. Uh, but there's a lot of guys that are going to have to step up coming down the stretch here. Um, and unfortunately, one of those dudes is... Uh, actually, two of those dudes are going to be Ben Shepard and Jarris Walker. Those are two guys that are really going to have to step it up down the stretch. Same thing with Benedict Matherin and Tyrese Halliburton. Tyrese Halliburton is not going to be a stranger to criticism on this channel. I just like Even though he's the best player on the team, uh, you know, he had, a, he had a good night against the Timberwolves. Not, I think he had uh, 19 and 11 or, or 20 and 11 somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, but when Tyrese Halliburton scores 20 points and dishes 12, 11, or 12 assists, we tend to win more often rather than him going out there and trying to score 30 or 40. This team has way more success when he's a distributor, but this team needs to find its identity. That's, that's the problem. Like in these next, you know, 19 games or so, 
this team needs to find like uh they, they need to hit their stride and they need to do it now uh they they can't wait to do it and the, the problem is uh, there's a lot of inconsistencies and like like for example with this team you know Tyrese Halliburton has unfortunately become a big question you know him and Miles both Miles is a guy that you know is a like what a career 37% three point shooter and he just hasn't been hitting the three very much at all this year um he's shooting the three i think in the ballpark of like uh, i think 33 or 34% uh don't quote me on it but the problem is we've dropped to the 8th seed and this is not a team that should be an 8th seed um, you know, Miles Turner shooting 33% from three this year. That's fucking abysmal compared to what he's done in years prior. Uh, but this is a team that really needs to get it together. I I want to see more Ben Shepard. I want to see more Jarris Walker. I I would I know Ben is injured, but you know, Aaron Neesmith just came back. We've been dealing with injuries on and off all season. But this is a team that, right, like now, if if you're gonna get serious, now's the time. Uh, you know, the the rest of the schedule is not super easy. You know, what I'm saying like Miami has an easier schedule than we do for to to run out the year here. But we we need to we need to figure some shit out. You know, what I'm saying I really think one of the things we should really focus on is the Pascal Siakam, Tyrese Halliburton pick and roll. I think that opens up the floor a lot for a lot of the other guys, and I think it takes a lot of pressure off the other guys too. Pascal Siakam is a guy who can score in the paint, uh, and Tyrese Halliburton's a guy that can hurt you from anywhere beyond the three-point line if you give him space. So I think if they can find a way to orchestrate that and make it so you can maybe free up Aaron Neesmith and Ben Shepard and Ben Matherin going down the road, if you can free those guys up and and get them some open three-point shots, maybe get them some better looks, maybe even get Miles some some three-point shots. Like, the one thing that irritated me against the Timberwolves, specifically, is Miles is a stretch big, you know, right? Like, we know he's capable of that, and I think he only took four three-pointers in that game. And I'm thinking to myself, right, like, if Carl Anthony Towns is out for the rest of the season... And you have Miles Turner and Pascal Siakam. Let them play inside out. Let Pascal Siakam do the damage down low, and let Miles Turner stand on the three-point line. <clears throat> you know, I've been saying it for a very long time now that this team plays the best when it's playing team basketball and the ball is moving. Right? <clears throat> the only times we've really seen it this year, where the the ball movement was just on another level was against Detroit right after the All-Star break, the very next game. A couple games against the Bucks, and I think one or two games against the Celtics. That was like the only time we saw it. But when we did, when we were moving the ball, when everybody was getting involved, everybody's getting touches, we win games. So, you know, that's something I'm looking forward to seeing more of, hopefully here down down the final stretch of the season. Um Isaiah Jackson has been very good. Jalen Smith has been very good. You know, like, this is a team that I just hope takes advantage of these things. And, and like, hopefully in the next 19 games here really figures it out. Because this is not a team that should be a play-in team. I, I'm just going to call it what it is. And I think you all agree with that, right? Like, this is a team that should be, a, like, a, in the 4 through 6 range in, in the playoffs. The idea that we're the 8th seed and, you know, Chicago is now a 500 basketball team. Like... We're, we're we're at the point where it's like, dude, like if we're gonna do this and and make us like take the playoffs seriously, we need to get our shit together now. You know, T.J. McConnell's been a bright spot all year. Um, it, it's sad because like T.J. McConnell is blowing Andrew Nemhard out in bench minutes. I, I'm just gonna call it what it is. Like I love it. I love me some Andrew Nemhard, but the fact of the matter is like. TJ McConnell is playing so much better than Andrew Nemhard this year that it, it just kind of like, I I really, I, I'm really starting to fi- try and like, how do you justify playing Andrew Nemhard over TJ McConnell at this point? Like that's, that's kind of where I'm at personally. Like I understand defensively Andrew Nemhard is better than TJ McConnell as far as like an on-ball defender. He doesn't get beat much. TJ McConnell is, is a feisty basketball player. He gets in between the passing lanes and all this other stuff, but I think Andrew Nemhard's the better on-ball defender. Uh, but th- when it comes to the offensive side of the ball, like it's it's a night and day difference. Like they they couldn't be any more farther apart. T.J. McConnell is the the spark plug on this team. He comes off the bench. He provides energy. He provides effort. 
and it, it like he energizes the bench unit um and I, I'm just it, it just it, I'm worried because I feel like this team has a lot of really good pieces and they still haven't figured out how to meld it all together here uh going into the final 19 games of the season so I don't know what's gonna happen uh but it, it's just like I'm, st- I'm I'm a little worried. Like I I can't believe I'm saying I'm worried, but I'm a little worried. You know, just a cu- like a couple like a week ago, I was saying like this team could be you know as high as the two seed, and now we're fucking worried about us not you know not being a playing team. So I don't know, man. Like this is a team that I expect to get into the playoffs. I I think we could upset somebody in the first round. Um, if we lost in the first round, I really wouldn't be that surprised. But at the same time, I, I think we can all agree that this team is better than what they've been showing us. Um, I, I think we can all agree like our expectations are higher than what we're getting. And I also think that this whole team, if they if they got a Milwaukee Bucks matchup in the first round, we could we could legitimately beat them. Like they're a team that we could legitimately beat. Uh, but the thing is, like, there's there's a handful of teams that if we played against them, I think we could beat. But if we get a Boston Celtics first round matchup, or even the Knicks, like, I, I hate to say it, but I mean, I know the Knicks have a whole bunch of fucking injuries going on right now, which is working in our benefit. But we need to capitalize on that as well. You know, like, if the Knicks are not playing good, we need to take that into consideration and use that to our advantage to win games where they otherwise might lose games, so we can move up in seeding. Um, but I, I just, I don't know how, what, like if that's going to happen, you know, like our, our team has been incredibly inconsistent all year. It sucks because I, I, I tell everyone it's like same old Pacers, right? Like we can beat the best teams in the fucking league, run them off the fucking floor, but we, we can't beat, you know, the fucking San Antonio Spurs. We can't beat the Detroit Pistons. You know, it, it's, it's embarrassing. We can't beat the Charlotte Hornets, you know, like it, we lose games to, to teams that we shouldn't be losing games to. And honestly, we sometimes win games against teams. We probably shouldn't be winning games uh, like against. So I don't know, man. The team is is uh, kind of sporadic at the moment. Like we don't know going in and out of games who, who's gonna win what. When like there are certain games that we get into where I'm like, we should win this game, and we fucking lose. So I, I don't know, man. I'm I'm growing a little a little worried. But do, do I think we're gonna make the playoffs? Yes, I think we're gonna make the playoffs. It's not gonna be as high as of a seed as I wanted us to be or expect us to be unfortunately I'm starting to think we're in the ballpark of like maybe uh, a 42 44 win team not 47 um, and, and like 47 wins would be nice but I'm looking at this team and I'm like I don't know if they're actually gonna get 47 wins you know it, it just I want to have faith but I'm starting to fucking lose it <laughs> I'm like dude like you know, when, like the Pelicans ran us off the fucking floor. You know, like that that game was was atrocious. I mean that that game was bad, bad. I like the arguably the worst game we've played all season. But these games that we're losing to, you know, like San Antonio, Charlotte, and stuff like that, we can't be doing that. Like these these games, I understand no win in the NBA is a free win, but these are the closest things to free wins you're gonna get if you're the Indiana Pacers. And you have to capitalize on it. And we simply haven't been. So, I don't know, man. You know, this year I don't think is our year. I'm just going to call it. I don't think this year is our year to make a serious, deep playoff run. I think next year is going to be. But... With that being said, I still have an expectation of this team to at least... My expectation is to at least make the second round. You know what I'm saying? Like, if we make the second round of the playoffs and we get knocked out, cool. I'm fine with it. But I would would at least like to see our team get there. And I'm starting to draw concerns. I'm starting to say, like, okay, like, you know, we play so inconsistently that I'm like, do we even have a shot at making the second round? And... I'm going to be honest, if we don't make the second round, I think a lot of fans are going to be like a little peed off. You know, like I I really think what needs to be emphasized this offseason is prioritizing the idea of finding a coach that can teach fucking defense because clearly Rick Carlisle can't. Clearly everyone else on his staff can't. 
okay? So we need to find a coach, a good defensive coach that's going to come into practice and teach Ben Matherin to be the guy that we, we, we know he can be. Teach Tyrese Halliburton to be better on defense. Um, ben Shepard's a guy that I actually think is really good on defense. Ben Shepard's a guy that I'm like fully looking forward to as to being a, a future piece of this team. He's a, a great 3 and D guy. Um, you know, ever since Buddy Heald left, I think he's been a, a solid replacement. But it, I, I'm just, I'm looking at this man and I'm like, it's it's kind of a mess. And I my expectations are higher than what I'm getting right now. And I think most of you would agree with that as well. So... Anyway, tell me what you guys think about this down below in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your guys' opinions on this. A like helps me out. Subscribe if you guys want to see more on the Fast Break Report. And I'm out of this motherfucker. Oh, wish me luck tomorrow too because I have to win 15 matches and I'm probably going to play like 26 or 25 of them tomorrow of pool. Uh, if I win, I get to go to Vegas. All expenses paid. So maybe I'll vlog it if I if that does happen that I do end up winning. But uh, I'll be playing for, for the top spot <laughs> tomorrow essentially. So... It's part of the reason I didn't release this video tomorrow, even though I wanted to. But anyway, peace out, guys. I'll see you in the next one.